Hello and welcome to Paydirt TV, I'm Dominic Piper. Today I'm joined by Ken Brinston, Managing Director of Pilbara Minerals. Ken, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Dominic. Ken, the last time you were on Paydirt TV, more than 12 months ago now, we were uh, beset by COVID. We didn't know where the lithium market was going. You didn't know where your pil Pilgangura uh, lithium operation was going to go. Uh, your neighbours had fallen into administration. It was a real dire strait for the WA lithium sector. 12 months on, the share price is on a skyrocketing exercise. You're past $4 billion market cap now. You've acquired your neighbours' operations and you're about to uh, switch on that plant. What, what has led to this turnaround? Well, we've gone from famine to face. Nothing could be truer. Yeah, the, the lithium raw materials market has completely turned on its head and it's been driven by the sort of really broad base of demand that now exists. It's, it's a global phenomenon. Uh, economic stimulus has gone into sort of key economies and have targeted the new energy sector. And as a result, batteries are a co-commitment to electrification of just about everything. And uh, as a result, demand conditions are really, really strong. And that's what represents the biggest change for, for our business. Um, as much as conditions were really tough this time last year, operationally, we'd come a long way. Um, improved our facilities, recoveries markedly improved, and that set up a fantastic platform to take advantage of this improvement in demand and now pricing conditions. So yeah, couldn't be happier with where we're at. Uh, you mentioned uh, the, the electrification of, of the world's transport systems. We're hearing a lot of talk recently of, of uh, big auto manufacturers in Europe, in the US, converting to battery uh, vehicles, electric vehicles. Are you seeing evidence of that in, in the marketing campaigns that you're doing and, and your uh, investigations into end uses? Yeah, yeah. No, very real phenomenon underway and, and um, incredible change going through the car industry. Um, I think finally the world's largest car manufacturers have worked out that, that electrification is the future for the car industry. Um, but in particular, and I think really importantly, um, the adoption of lithium-ion battery technology as a platform for the future success of their industry. Um, that's resulted in quite significant changes in behaviour as to how they're sourcing and how they're um, integrating with you know, upstream businesses that are going to support that electrification theme. Are you seeing interest from that side of the market in the Pilbara Mineral story? Uh, some some uh, car companies, some battery manufacturers have done it better than others. Um, it's certainly not universal. So it's not just a little change, it's not just a little tweak to the supply base, it's, it's factors of 10, you know, 10 times more um, uh, minerals that are required to support that electrification theme. So it is forcing some, some different action. You mentioned existing customers. Obviously, you've got a, a number of offtake agreements already in place. How are you positioned within this growing marketplace? Are, have you got room to manoeuvre and, and change strategy? Or are you locked into to certain customer bases? Uh, well, we, we really like our existing customer base and they are the guys that are really deeply integrated into the battery supply chain, so, so we're only too happy to, to continue to look after them. But we do like the idea that we've got flexibility uh, and that was actually one of the value propositions that we saw in the acquisition of the, the former Altura assets. Um, it would bring into the portfolio more available spodumene and concentrate capacity. Um, spodumene is in short supply. And the very fact that we now have available capacity coming um, means that we're really well positioned to, to support that short market. And ultimately, we think that plays really well to price. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we've exercised a different sales strategy. The, the BMX platform, uh, Battery Materials Exchange, being a, a key, um, key frontier, key channel for the purpose of sales. And basically with the premise that we can access many, many more buyers than would typically be the case. Uh, that's one part of it. The second part of it is the, the idea that there will be more transparency um, and, and we can create a platform that customers can access um, and, and be secure in the knowledge that if they're paying the right price, they can, they can access the product. Um, and then lastly, uh, we like the idea that we have a certain portion of our available spodumene it is not currently locked up in offtake and that gives us greater flexibility for the future and the things that we might like to achieve with our business which might include further value adding our products 
um, ourselves, you know, in the Pilbara. You mentioned the fact that you, you've taken a decision to switch on you know, the, you know, the former Altura processing plant. What lessons have you learned at Pilbang, Pilgangura that you'll be able to apply to the recommissioning of an, an operation of that plant? Really valuable lessons have been learned at the Pilgan plant, at the former Pilgangura plant. Um, and especially in the flotation area, so we're really confident in our ability to grab the success there and overlay it on the Nugaju facilities. Um, key things, um, you know, high intensity condition, the flotation reagent regime, um, the consistency of product being presented to, to the flotation circuit, iron removal, they're all really valuable and hard won lessons that, that we take out of our Pilgan operations and now step over to Nagaju with a lot of confidence about our ability to re-rate the capacity in that facility. How are you tackling uh, the challenge of reducing your carbon footprint it's at your uh, Pilbara operations? Yeah, we, uh, you're right. It, it is incredibly important. Uh, and the medium and long term, it will be a genuine competitive advantage um, of our Pilgangora operations. Now, I, I start that by saying people currently imagine that the hard rock supply chain is energy intensive and carries a higher carbon footprint. And I, I completely disagree with that, our subset of the industry being characterised like that. Um, because it's imagined that there's an absence of innovation and I can assure you there is plenty more innovation to come in the hard rock supply chain. Um, we've made some important steps forward and you mentioned Calix being one of the key, uh, key levers. Um, that is absolutely the case. So Calix have got an innovative calcination technique that we think is a really material step change in in the energy intensity um, and the ability to create um, a basically renewable solutions for the, the, the job of calcination. Um, and it's, it's things like that that are going to materially drop the carbon intensity of the hard rock supply chain and we're in, determined to make sure that Pilbara Minerals is ahead of the curve. What's uh, Pilbara's strategy when it comes to downstream processing? Well, we very much like the initiative, um, but we're not into spending billions of dollars on, on the fully fledged hydroxide facilities. Um, we would argue that that skill set is, is actually not suited to the mining game. Um, so we're looking at recutting the supply chain and creating different products that aren't necessarily the end use, um, but those that are better suited to our, our skill of application and, and mining ability, um, but also making sure you re-rate the lithia value in the product so you're not shipping people a whole heap of waste. Ken, obviously uh, electric vehicles and, and electrification is a, is a developing scene. How confident are you that lithium ion batteries will maintain their, their market share and, and, and how important is that for, for lithium supply? Well, it makes sense to keep an eye on emerging technologies, um, but I honestly think the answer is in, in the amount of money that's already being spent in the lithium-ion battery platform. Um, one of the things that's great about lithium-ion batteries is, in the scheme of things, they're a relatively new phenomenon, um, certainly at commercial scale. They've really only come to the fore, let's say, in the last decade. And what that means is that um, even though it's already been successful, there is still a lot more perfection to come within the lithium ion battery platform. Now I see that as huge opportunity because the batteries are going to become more efficient, typically more energy dense and, and importantly and most importantly cheaper. And what that means is that any competing technology doesn't just compete at today's lithium ion battery cost, they compete at the cost of a lithium ion battery in 10 years time and I can assure you in 10 years time it is going to be materially cheaper. The net effect of all that is that the lithium-ion battery platform is the winner, I would argue, for at least a generation. Now, there'll be further perfection inside the lithium-ion battery platform, but nonetheless, they'll still be using lithium, they'll still have an anode, they'll still have a cathode, and uh, I think that means a lot more lithium raw material is required yet. Ken, that's very exciting news for Pilbara Minerals, its, in its investors and shareholders, and of course, the entire Australian lithium industry. Thanks for joining us today, and hopefully we can catch up again soon and hear about how you've doubled the market cap again. Nice to be with you. Thanks, mate.